Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. I have a, I just got a flu yesterday and I have a bit of a headache. So uh, I apologize for the runny nose, but uh, let's see how this goes. Today we're going to be talking about the selective color panel in Photoshop. We're going to open up the tool and I'm going to go through the, each of the sliders and kind of explain how it works and how we can use them to uh, use the tool to color grade our images. But with that said, let's open up Photoshop and let's get started. Okay, so here you guys can see an old photo of me that I took like two months ago. And it's been edited and color graded already, but I thought I'll use this tool to explain the usage of selective color as this is a monochromatic image. Uh, all of it uh, is kind of brownish, so we can easily see the changes in color uh, while working on this image. So the selective color panel can be found from down here and it's the lo lowest one here so let's click on that and bring it here let's just move these over a bit so we can see okay so selective color has uh, no presets at least i don't have hopefully i haven't deleted them um, and then uh it has a choice of colors we have the reds yellows greens cyans blues magentas so all the same colors as we normally have when using the curves adjustment panel or like that. And then we have the whites, neutrals and blacks. How selective color works is it uses these sliders. And when we pull the sliders to one direction or the other, it actually what it what it does is it kind of uses the curves curves like I've told you guys before it uses the curves and bends them around and creates new points each time we pull a slider so when we use the curves adjustment panel we usually create one two or three points in the curves uh, not more but using the selective color it creates points in many different areas and gives us the opportunity to kind of uh, go a bit deeper with our color grading, if you will. So, for example, here now we're controlling the blacks, which means kind of the shadow areas of the photograph. We can add cyan to the shadows or we can take cyan away from the shadows, which brings up reds. So now let's say we'll take this to a more bluish tone. So we're going to pull up the cyan in the shadows. Then we have the magenta, we can add magenta to the shadows, we can take magenta away from the sh shadows and add a bit of green. So again, we're going to a bluish tone, let's add a bit of magenta here. And then we have the yellow, we can add yellow, or then we can take yellow away, which adds blue into the image. Let's take just a tiny bit of blue out of the image. And now we kind of color graded the shadows. Uh, and then we have the black, uh, or down here we have always this slider called black which really means just the brightness so we can darken the shadows which also desaturates the shadows as you can see it went to a more black tone or we can brighten the shadows so for here let's go for a, a bit darker blacks let's say like plus five so that's the black sli uh, black sliders then we have the neutrals which controls the mid tones in the curves so again, we can do the same. We can add blue or cyan or take away blue or again, cyan, sorry guys. So let's add a bit of cyan there. Let's see, do we want magenta or not? Let's take a bit of magenta away. We can add yellow, we can take yellow away. I'm gonna take away some yellow like this. And again, with the black slider, we can brighten up the midtones or darken the midtones. I'm gonna darken just 2%. And then we have the whites here, which again control the highlights. So we can pull the highlights. In this image, we have really only the shirt. So if you take a look at here, I'll just pull the science. You'll see how the whites turn a bit more cool, or then I can pull away cyan and it adds a bit of a reddish tone to the highlights. It's a pretty subtle effect in this one. So I'm going to probably just leave it almost as it is. And again, the blackness slider adds a bit of brightness to the highlights 
or darkens them. I'm gonna leave them quite white. And now, as you guys can see, I'll just push the slider, uh, this eye here. We could change this image totally just by using these three uh, different options here, whites, neutrals, and blacks. Then, if we have an image that has even more colors, this is a very mono monochromatic image, we can go into the blues and control the hue of the blues and see how that works. But because this is a very monochromatic image, it doesn't work in this image as well. So <clears throat> what I think we're going to do is today we're going to go through just these whites, neutrals and blacks as we just talked about. And next week we'll take another photograph and talk about the reds, yellows, green, cyans, blues and magentas and see what those colors gives us. Uh, give us. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the selective color. It's a very easy tool which gives us very nice control on the curves that we usually don't get. So it creates points in several different places and twists them around in ways that we usually don't do when we work with curves. So that's why I like using the selective color when doing a bit more advanced color grading. The nice thing about selective color is also you can pull down the opacity on it and kind of combine different selective color adjustments and uh, see what that brings out. So let's say here I've prepared uh, two selective colors from here that I did earlier. Let's see. I did this nice and blue, uh, blue grayish tone, and then I did this reddish, uh, very orangey photograph as well. Uh, we can pull down the opacity on this red one and kind of bring it more to a brownish tone and then pull down the opacity on the blue one from here as well. Actually, let's, say, let's do, the, do it this way. First, add a bit of blue, but not as much as we had there before. Let's say like 80% of blue. And then just a tiny bit of orange color to kind of bring it to a more of a greenish tone. Let's see from here, 20% of orange. That way, we can also kind of just combine these two different looks together uh, on top of the original photograph and again get a totally different look. So selective color is nice for getting uh, many different kind of color variations quickly so that we kind of see which direction we want to take the image and then we can start fine tuning with the sliders and kind of that's how the selective color adjustment panel works. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. And as always, if you have any questions or requests for future episodes, just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next Tuesday. Bye.